very, very quickly over a period of quite a lot of pain, I was paralyzed, lost all of my sensation and movement, not just from my legs, but right up into my chest. Here we go. So it's a, it's a presentation case for my medals. Ten years since London 2012. Does it seem like a decade ago to you? Does it seem like a lifetime ago? In some ways, the memories are so vivid, so real. It, time has passed quite quickly as well, and a lot's happened since 2012. I think we all miss it. The country misses that 2012 summer. Do you still have very personal, sharp memories of ten years ago? The most vivid memory I think is sitting on the start line for the Olympic final. When you're sitting there, you're, you're ready and, and highly confident at this point. I'm looking at my crew thinking, there's no way anyone can beat you guys. No one, any, anyone can beat Andy Hodge, no way. The camera pans over the six crews in the final at Dorney Lake at home, a lake that I'd raced on and trained on my whole career. And suddenly you're in an Olympic final. And when the camera got to us, this roar from two kilometers away came up the lake. So we knew that the crowd could see the British crew and it just makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. You were doing that 10 years ago at the same time as having a role as an officer in the Royal Navy. How difficult was that? The Navy made it as easy as they possibly could for me. That's really important. So, so I, I love the Royal Navy. It's important actually to say here that I, I joined the Royal Navy before I ever knew about rowing. I, I hadn't taken my uh, first stroke. I joined in 1999 and I was a, I, I passed my interview on my 18th birthday and went to Naval College and, and I, my career was going in a, an, a route of naval engineering and then during training I found that I had an aptitude for sport. As it happens it worked out. I've, I've got three Olympic gold medals. In my days I wouldn't have imagined that. Ever, ever. And then I went back to the Navy after I retired from, from rowing. I'd had a spinal stroke um, and just very, very, very quickly uh, over a period of quite a lot of pain, I was paralyzed, lost all of my sensation and movement, not just from my legs, but right up into my chest. So um, a spinal stroke is nothing that everyone needs to worry about. Apparently 1% of strokes are in your spinal cord and not in your brain. Uh, it can happen to anyone at any time, it's just bad luck. Andy Hodge, my old teammate, was there the next day, he drove down. That was hard, you know, that, that was the first time I cried, because I'd seen my, my best mate. And we, we never let each other down, and then all of a sudden I'm in bed lying there with, uh, with no movement in my legs. And I'm still in that fourth Olympiad for me. It's not a gold medal anymore, it's, it's, it's progress, it's purpose, it's fulfilment, it's independence, it's building a home, it's getting used to being in a wheelchair. Where are you now in that learnable recovery process? Two and a half years post-injury, still learning, not everything's set up. We haven't even got um, the, the basic foundations of life that Maslow talks about in his hierarchy of need, the, the shelter and food and safety and all of those bits. We're not quite there yet, we're nearly there, but we are learning where we want to live, how we want to live, and then what purpose, fulfillment, employment looks like post-Navy. And your life so far has been defined by change, hasn't it? This is another change. It's another change, and that's okay as well. I think change, a lot of people get very uncomfortable around it because you, it's nice to stay in your comfort zone and status quo is always good. I, I promise change is good. It, it forces you to reevaluate, forces you to stretch yourself and have a think. So tell me, Pete, the way that your life has changed in practical ways that you never imagined it would change. So I, I'm not six foot six anymore, and I'm, I'm not the solution to physical problems anymore. I'm part of that physical problem, but that, that's only because we live in a world that wasn't designed for wheelchair users. Yeah. Because most designers aren't wheelchair users. Curbs are barriers, steps are barriers. If there's a narrow passageway, if it's wider than this, I cannot go through. I can't, even transferring onto the floor and it doesn't work. Look, there's a slight camber on this pavement and I've just tilted over to the left here. So you can't possibly imagine 
what living in a world that's not designed for wheelchair users um, is like. Oh, there we go. Hi, Faye. How are you? Thanks, thanks for helping. You're very well. Being comfortable is fine as long as you're recovering, but change forces that bit of discomfort and that bit of uncertainty that helps us all grow. To bring it back round to 2012, what would you say to people that you've learned about yourself that you didn't know in 2012? I'd say the importance of other people it is extraordinary. Other people matter, teams matter. Uh, I think looking back to 2012, I was quite a selfish athlete, um, especially 2008, but back then I was... I was it was, it was too selfish and too focused. And you get more out of yourself if you just put into other people. Kindness, focus on others, because you quickly realize that you actually know nothing. You know nothing, and we still, to this day, we think we know nothing. Um, but that's, that's how you learn, with that curiosity of what other people are doing, other people's perspective, other people's skills.